Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. <clears throat> I've almost got my voice back, so hopefully I'll just be able to go ahead and talk through all of this one. Anyway, we are out on the launch pad with our uh, intended uh, Ganymede landing craft, which uh, needs a name. Uh, I meant to ask for this during the build episode and then forgot. In the interest of wanting to give everybody a fair shot, if you have a name suggestion for this little spacecraft, please leave it in the comments below. Um, our relative inclination with the moon is down to 0.25, so uh, let's set our throttle to full, make sure SAS is on, get the ignition sequence rolling. And it looks like we're lit. And for half a second there, it did not look like those uh, 171s were lit. They are in fact lit, and we are in fact moving. Uh, this is probably going to be the last flight of this iteration of the DN5. Uh, BX. It has our extended HG3 upper stage. It still is utilizing the mixed boosters uh, down here, which, oh yeah, before I forget, let me just uh, bring that up. We'll see how well my guesstimations were on uh, getting these things all set up. Uh, we certainly have enough Delta V to make it to Jupiter. It's just how many gravity assists are we going to need to utilize to get our orbit uh, around Ganymede, and will we have enough Delta B after that to land? These are all big unknowns for me, and I actually think that I did not do a very good job building this thing out, so uh, we may be doing a second or third attempt at this. Maybe Ganymede will turn into my new Mars. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try to fly this little guy to orbit while keeping this relative inclination somewhat under control, and I will see all of you there. It would, however, be extra nice if we could just get this done in one fell swoop. Um, I mean, not that that means that we won't be returning at all, but uh, it would be nice to just get the pattern down. Anyway, I've brought up the uh, fuel windows for the uh, booster primary tank and the booster engine mount tanks, just so I can see uh, about how accurate my very loose guesstimation of fuel consumption differences between the two engines would be. Uh, hopefully I'm not too far off, although I really don't intend on using this particular launch vehicle um, much, if at all, anymore. Um, you know, it's just weird, it's a lot of hassle, and uh, I've got something with much higher capacity now. There's booster set. There was a very small discrepancy, um, but not a great one. I think it may have cost us maybe 10 or 15 meters per second total. Uh, fairings are off, it's time to power up our dish and get it angled in for Earth, or programmed to tell it to Earth. And just a quick check to make sure that all of our uh, Aerozine and N2O tanks up top are locked, so we're not draining fuel up there unnecessarily. Uh, we're going to need every single gram of that that we can. But uh, like I said earlier, I think this is probably going to be the last launch for this variant of the DN5. Um, the extended upper stage is super useful, but uh, a better booster solution is needed. And really, going any higher than just using the cluster of E1s, like uh, with a twin or even quad RD-171s, is a bit excessive for what the rest of the vehicle is capable of doing. So I think it will forever remain the uh, awkward middle child of a launch vehicle family. Um, not quite suited to do the really nice big things, but way too powerful to do even something like this was kind of the median of it's too much for this job. There's a course up and a good light on the HG3 upper stage to complete circularization. Uh, just a little help from the RCS thrusters, um, quite unnecessarily, but I don't know. Old habits, they die hard. So anyway, uh, here's uh, old me for more live commentary. Alright, 225 by 180 kilometer, not bad. We've got uh, 6.9 kilometers per second left in the tank. Uh, I'd say all in all that's pretty good, so let's go ahead and uh, zoom all the way out here. There's Jupiter set as target. Yeah, we don't need you anymore. What we do need, however, is a maneuver planner. There it is. Thank you for catching up to me. We'll computing. There we go. 
in pork chop selection. Uh, what's lowest delta V? Is any time now? 6.23 kilometers per second. Let's create that node. Bang. All right. And we'll uh, go in here. Oh, I did not mean to hit unset target. Yeah. No. Yeah. Set as target. Focus view. That's what I meant to do. All right. Yeah. We need to bring that in a whole lot closer, hopefully. Uh, okay. Good, good, good. I can make uh, reasonable changes here. Europa IO Ganymede set as target. So ideally we would like our periapsis to be somewhere near that descending node. Ideally we would like the game to recognize my mouse wheel things here, but uh, nope. Other way. There we go. So we'll just drag that in until we got them about lined up. And hopefully it won't be inside Jupiter's atmosphere, and hopefully we can make it not quite so inclined. That would be uh, even more ideal, I would say. So give me a few minutes to tug at these node strings, and we'll see what we can't figure out. And really the more I tug and play with these things, the more I think that a mid-course correction is probably going to be uh, absolutely necessary to adjust plane. But uh, if we can get our orbital eccentricity right on that... Uh, descending or ascending node out there, we might be able to fix it relatively cheaply, but that remains to be seen. All right, well, I think we can manage with this. Uh, 6.214 kilometers per second in one hour and 17 minutes. That says the burn's gonna take 15 minutes. We know that's not true. We can displace more of that in half the time. So uh, our RCS is already fired up. We have good connection thank goodness let's uh make this nice long slow rotation over to our node well it's not too bad so we're just going to warp on around to the node hopefully i won't fly right past it all right we're about five minutes out uh, the burn should take no more than eight minutes, realistically. So, uh, man, that is quite an off angle. Did I do that or did MechJeb do that, I wonder? So we're going to start to make sure that our HG3 is ullaged in. And we've got gobs of electric charge. So there should be no problems here getting this ignition. Yeah, we're already very stable. We're just going to give it about another minute or so to make sure we don't botch this node too badly. Uh, right, 20 some odd seconds to go. We're just going to go ahead and get this back and point it at the node. It wandered off a little bit there in physics warp. And very stable. Ignition. We have a good light. Fantastic. Ah, oh, that's good to see. All right. And uh, now we just uh, hope that we don't push our periapsis uh, below the atmosphere. It is falling, but uh, not all that quickly. And we will be at periapsis in a, less than a minute, although as it is descending, we are pushing it further ahead. And it is not descending very fast, so I'm not all that worried about us uh, skimming back through the atmosphere at this point. I think we'll be okay. We can probably get rid of Maneuver Planner now. And just enjoy our latest shot for Jupiter. It's nice that these Hydrolox engines uh, burn so pretty, or at least that KSB is so pretty, because man, some of these long burns just do take a a very very long time I guess that's a little redundant but yeah this is uh, typically the point where I just say okay it's on the node uh, things look good I'm gonna go get a soda okay, come back and then realize that I'm not quite on the node readjust yeah this is this is the reason why so many of these uh, trajectories go so far off the node is because I'm not actually here paying attention to stuff 
because it's going to take like 10 minutes. And who has time for that? Yeah. If the thrusters are firing, you know I'm here and I'm paying attention. If they're not, I'm, I might be spinning in my chair or taking the dogs outside. Either way. Um, <laughs> a lot more laissez-faire here at the uh, Cosmonaut Crash Space Program than any real space program would <laughs> ever allow in any sense of the word whatsoever. But uh, at least the view is good, which does help uh, keep me in the chair most days. Anyway, I, it was a uh, it was a small worry that maybe since I had a little more fuel allocated to this stage than the rated runtime of the HG3, that we might see a problem towards the end of the burn. Uh, but we actually ended up with a fair amount of excess delta V in this stage at the end of it, um, both showing that uh, we're way under our tonnage limit for uh, this particular mission or this particular launch vehicle, either or, but um, I'm glad we didn't lose an engine halfway through or anything like that. It may have been mission scrubbing, and I'm also glad that the engine lit appropriately. A uh, quick look out at the map view just to uh, check in on a few things and remind myself of other spacecraft that I probably need to go look at soon. Anyway, here's old me as we finish this out. All right, not bad. I'm going to try to touch this up with uh, RCS. It seems to be moving pretty well. I'm just going to ignore the node and try to just bring this on home. Oh boy. I, I see now that I should have saved some of this RCS. Oh well. Hard to tell when the game is doing its, uh, I'm gonna freeze for a second or two versus when we've actually run out of fuel, but we'll see how this goes. So far, it's not so bad. Yeah, I think that's the end of our RCS in our HG3 stage. Let's just double check. Yep, those tanks are empty, so it is time to decouple. Let's unlock this tank first. Decouple. No. Where are where why are you doing this to me? Who told you to re-angle yourself, sir? Alright, back to the map view. Yeah, getting a little more um Oomph out of it this time. Okay, yeah, no, not really. I really don't want to have to fire up that AJ-10 just for the specific purpose of lowering this periapsis, but I think that might be what I have to do here. How's our electric charge looking? Uh, we're still showing a drain. That's not good. That's not good at all. So I think what we're going to come down here and do is uh, shut down. <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> at least now it won't be trying to throw us off, but we're only like less than a third of a ton off of that weight. I don't think that, yeah, that didn't put us in the charging territory, but won't be that big of a deal <clears throat> within the uh, first couple of seconds of firing up that AJ-10 we'll get avionics back and that's only if I forget to reactivate that core yeah I'm totally gonna go back and reactivate the core almost right away uh, this is all sped up footage just to show you how long this was taking but I actually got fed up with it and uh, activated the AJ-10 and did the uh, last little bit of the burn on the back of that just to uh, make things go a little quicker. Yeah, here's me being fed up with all of this nonsense. Angle into the node, activate the engine, fire it up, bang. Okay, not at all what I wanted it to be, but fine. <laughs> uh, let's uh, see what our node to capture into orbit looks like. There we go, uh, you know, 700 something meters per second, we can uh, yeah, it doesn't change it a whole hell of a lot to bring it down here, but we can try to shift some of that weight 
Yeah, let's shift it this way. No. Is that making it worse? That's making it worse. Well, let me kill that note. Okay, or, you know, whatever. We'll just, we'll plot that node uh, some other time. But yes, we're going to capture an orbit, we're going to make an inclination change, and then we're probably going to try some nifty gravity assisty things to put us on a solid intercept here at Ganymede. Uh, there will probably be several flyby assists uh, involved in that. So, add, oh yeah, no, never mind. Go away, Kerbal Alarm Clock. Let me just come out here and hit Add Maneuver. Add Alarm. Maneuver node in two years, 191 days. Add Alarm. Thank you very much. So now we know when to come back to this. Good. I did not uh, forget to change that engine type. Five kilometers per second left in uh, basically our utility capture stage and then I think we've got about a kilometer a second maybe two in the lander itself uh, all in all not too bad I hope anyway so we can just go ahead and get him clear of the planet here yes that's pretty fantastic I like it anyway we've got a lot of other uh, businessy things to attend to ah, go away <laughs> uh, a lot of it being our stuff getting to Saturn you can see all of these are pretty close here we've got to double check up on our gravity assists for those um, and I think yeah we're going to need to resupply the moon base we're going to need to resupply our orbital orbital earth orbital station uh, Tremonia so uh, lots of exciting things coming up. So um, no, wrong button again. There, there we, there we go. That's a little better. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.